Hello and welcome back to freephotoshop.com. This week I've got a creative colour twirl on the agenda. It's the effect that you see in front of you right now, and over the course of the next few moments, we're going to recreate it together. So let's start off by opening up a new document by using the keyboard shortcut Control N, that's Command N on the Mac, and we'll call the new document Color Twirl, and we'll create a 500 by 500 pixel document. And we'll also make sure that we have a transparent background, and then click OK. Next, we need to form the basis of whatever we want to use to make the twirl itself. And to keep things simple here, I'll go for the same effect as the one I used in the example. So I'll come over here to the toolbox and select the rectangular marquee tool. And then I'll come up here to the options bar and activate the style drop down menu and then go for the fixed size option. So we can create a rectangle of appropriate size for the image. And of course, the size that we're going to input here will be dependent upon the size of the document and the effect that we're ultimately going to go for. So I'll select a height of 500 pixels and then a width of 50 pixels. And 50 is going to work out great here because it's a multiple of 500. And you'll see what I mean once we've created these rectangular stripes across the image. Now I'll come down to the document and click just outside the document itself, just at the top right side here in fact. And that should make a selection of 50 pixels wide by 500 pixels high and completely cover the far left side of the document. Perfect. If you're having problems sorting that out, then you can even nudge the selection using the arrow keys on the keyboard or drag the selection itself from inside its confines. Okay, that's cool. Now to fill the selection with a color, I want you to come over here to the palettes on the right hand side and make sure the color palette is open. And if you're having trouble finding it, then you may need to go to the Windows menu up here at the top and select the color palette option. Now all we need to do is move the sliders around until we find a color we like. Then to add it to the selection, I want you to press Alt Delete on the keyboard. Or if you're using a Mac, that would be Option Delete. All right, that's filled the selection outline with the stipulated color. Now we need to move the selection area along so we can do exactly the same thing again. And we can do that with the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it to the right location. But instead of pressing the right arrow key 50 times to move it 50 pixels to the right, we can hold down the shift key and then press the right arrow key five times. And that's because when we have the shift key down, we move the selection 10 pixels at a time. All right, with the selection outline in position, we can come back over to the color palette, select ourselves another color using these sliders, these red, green and blue sliders, and then once again hit Alt Delete or Option Delete if you're on the Mac to add the active color into the selected area of the image. Now to save you watching me repeat that process another eight times, I'm going to switch over to a document that I went ahead and created before recording. So I've now finished setting up the color bars that run vertically across the image. Now we need to go ahead and add a couple of filters to give it the effect we want. So first things first, in order to keep things as non-destructive as possible, I'm going to switch things over to a smart object so we can apply non-destructive filters to it. And if you haven't got access to smart filters and smart objects, then you can just skip this bit and move straight on to the part where we add the filters. But if you are using CS3 or later, then come down to the Layers palette, right-click on an empty area next to the layer's name, and choose the Convert to Smart Object option. Now to create our effects, come up here to the Filters menu, select the Distort submenu, and then choose the Polar Coordinates filter. We'll get this little dialog box come up, and all we need to do here is make sure that we have Rectangular to Polar option selected, and then hit OK. Finally, we'll come back up here to the Filters menu, select Distort once again, and this time choose the 12 filter. Once again, we get a small dialog box come up with just one option, and that controls the degree and intensity of the twirl. I'm going to go for a value of 250 degrees, and we get a little preview to see what that may look like. I'm happy with how that will look once we apply the effect of the image, so I'll go ahead and hit the OK button to apply the second smart filter to the smart object. Well, there it is, a fairly simple effect, but one that you can be very creative with. In fact, here's some examples of what else you can do with it. 
Here's a twirl with the plastic filter applied and coloured brown. Kind of looks chocolatey to me, I don't know what you think, but uh, I would say that's a chocolate effect. Next we have the text effect using the free Photoshop web address. And then finally we have a more random effect using a number of filters from Photoshop's large filter collection, just in the name of experimentation. Well I hope you found this video tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.